Let's see the mandibular fracture. Outline Introduction, Classification, Etiology, Epidemiology, Sign and Symptoms, Investigation and Management. Let's see the introduction. Fracture of the mandible occurs more frequently than that of any other facial skeleton. It is a one serious facial bone injury that average the practicing dental surgeon may expect to encounter. It is also facial fractures which he may have the misfortune to cause as a complication of tooth extraction. It is boldly divided into two forms. Fracture with no gross communication with the bone and without significant loss of the hard and soft tissue. Fracture with a gross communication of the bone with extensive loss of the both hard and soft tissue. Okay. Let's see the anatomy of the mandible. It's a lower jaw bone, U shaped body. You will see this shape is U shape. Two vertical direct rami that is having two process. Condylar process, this is a condylar process, and this is coronite process. This condylar process and coronite process form the temporomandibular joint. Then this is the oblique line. You will see the oblique line here. This is the oblique line. And mental foramen here. This is the mental foramen. This is the oblique line. Then now see we internal anatomy of the mandible. The mandibular foramen that is this is a mandibular foramen you will see then this is a lingula this is a mandibular foramen and this is a lingula it is a ear shape outcomes of the bone it is derivate fovea this part is called a derivate fovea this is mylohyde line Now we see the fossa. This is submandibular fossa. Submandibular fossa. Cause the submandibular li gland lies in this fossa. Then sublingual fossa. This is a sublingual fossa. And digastric. This is a digastric triangle. Okay. Now we see that this digastric triangle. Then sublingual fossa and submandibular fossa then mental spine the genoglossus and genohyde now we see the musculature that elevate the jaw that is masseter muscles it originated from zygoma to the angle of the ramus this is zygoma to the angle of the ramus this is a masseter muscle you can see now temporalis muscles the temporalis muscles lies over the coronoid process and it is also on the inside it originated from the temporo infratemporal fossa to coronoid and the ramus then medial pterygoid muscles and is originated from medial pterygoid plate and pyramidal process into the lower mandible. It lies inside internal anatomy of the mandible. Now we see the musculature which depresses the jaw. Is lateral pterygoid muscles. Lateral pterygoid muscles is originated from the lateral pterygoid plate to the condylar neck and the TMJ capsule. Here is lateral pterygoid. Mylohyde muscles which lies on the mylohyde line of the mandible. Here this is the mylohyde line and the muscle is also lies on this mylohyde ridge. Then digastric muscles. Here it's originated from the mastoid notch to digastric fossa. 
here is digastric fossa and this and this region digastric muscle is seen then genohyoid muscles inferior genial tubercles to the anterior hyoid bone it's here genohyoid you will see this is genohyoid and genioglossus muscles now innervation blood supply mandible having bus blood supply through internal maxillary artery inferior alveolar artery and mental artery classification of the fracture type of fractures site of the fractures and the cause of the fractures let's see the types of the fractures first type is simple fracture simple fractures include a closed linear fractures of the condyle coronoid ramus and the edentulous of the body of the mandible compound fractures is a fracture of the tooth bearing portion of the mandible into the mouth where the periodontal membrane and the times through the overlying skin comminuted fractures is usually compound fractures characterized by the fragmentation of the bone in this fracture the there is a small small fragment of the bone that is more than the three or four fragments of the bone that's why it's called as a comminuted fractures pathological fractures are result from the already weakened mandible due to some pathological condition like like osteomyelitis osteoporosis or some kind of bone carcinoma that is osteosarcoma or any other pathological condition now i'll show you the diagram this is a simple fracture you will see the fracture line only coronoid process is involved compound fracture which divide two mandible into two parts and comminuted fractures you will see the fragment of the bone now fracture is also classified on the side there is dento alveolar fracture you will see if the fracture involved in dento alveolar process that fracture is called as a dento alveolar fractures this fractures happen in between this area that is teeth and dento alveolar process then second is condylar fracture which which occurs at the condyle this is a area of condylar fracture about this line on this condyle then ramus fracture ramus area is this this is this part of the mandible is called ramus if the fracture fractures occurs in this region is called the ramus fracture the angle it is the part in between ramus and the body of the mandible where the two portion is joined is as a called as the angle most frequently fracture occurs in this side is the angle then body body is from molar to premolar areas this fracture is called the body fracture of the mandible then symphysis and parasymphysis it is the anterior region of the mandible where the fracture is occurs it is from incisor to canine this is a classification of fractures depending upon the site now we will see in another diagram also you will see the area of the fracture depending upon the site then causes of fracture the first cause is the direct violence and second is indirect violence the direct violence is caused due to the some fighting between two peoples and injured the mandibles indirect violence like some accident cases excessive muscular contraction 
the fracture of the coronoid process occurs due to sudden reflection of the contracture of the temporalis muscles this kind of a fracture you will see in the patient of the epilepsy a suddenly epilepsy attack come to the patient in this case okay the fracture is also classified on the depending upon the patterns that is unilateral fracture bilateral fracture multiple fracture and commutative fracture unilateral fractures means the fracture line is occurs only on the one side of the mandible that is unilateral if it is on the both side it is called as a bilateral fracture and if it is on the different location that is called multiple fractures see this fracture in the midline coronoid process is also known on one side and also on other side it is also called as comminuted fracture or multiple fractures then etiology most there are so many etiology for the fractures but we will see some of this example road traffic accident interpersonal violence contact sport industrial trauma and falls there are so many etiology and then there are some studies are given by the okari and on and lint squids in 1975 they give the percentage of the fractures the most frequently fracture is mandible which is 61% after that maxilla is there 46% then zygoma 27% and nasal bone 19% then we will see the sign and symptoms symptoms of the fracture the general symptoms and specific symptoms general symptoms is related to overall the fracture site and specific is related only to the site of the fracture the general sign and symptoms first symptoms is swelling after the fracture the area to be swell second feature is pain third feature is rolling of the saliva tenderness tenderness is when the fracture site is to be touched and the patient feel the pain it is called as tenderness then bony discontinuity the some bony abnormality you can see in the case of the fracture then laceration that is soft tissue injury limitation in mouth opening it is due to swelling and some kind of a trauma to the bone so it is difficult to open the mouth to the patient then ecchymosis that is redness appearance at the site of the fracture and fracture sub luxate and luxated teeth it is due to the trauma to the tooth and tooth is luxated from the dental layer process and bleeding from the mouth it's a general sign and symptoms of the fracture then we see the specific sign and the symptom of the fracture they describe the is give the is give to some hint to find the fracture site in the case of a dental alveolar fracture the lip is bruised and lacerated step deformity step deformity is some kind of a step that the dental alveolar process of the fracture part is upward or a downward so it's form a step then bony discontinuity fracture laceration luxation subluxation of the teeth laceration of the gingiva <coughs> then fracture of the body if the body is fracture there are some kind of specific symptoms we will see the first is swelling pain tenderness step deformity anesthesia and paresthesia of the leaf leap intraoral hemorrhage then symphysial and parasympathetic fractures tenderness sublingual hematoma loss of the tongue control soft tissue injury to the chin and the lower lip then in the case of a fracture of the ramus we will see the swelling ecchymosis pain and trismus in the case of a fracture of the angle of the mandible 
there is swelling posterior gag they arrange occlusion anesthesia or paresthesia of the lip hematoma state deformity behind the last molar and tenderness in case of the fracture of the angle the occlu the occlusion of the teeth is to be deranged then the fracture of the coronoid if the coronoid fracture is occurs the symptoms are tenderness over the anterior part of the tragus hematoma painful limitation of the movement protrusion of the mandible may be present symphysial and parasympathetic fracture this already i have discussed condylar fractures unilateral condylar fractures is occurs and swelling over the tmj that is temporal mandibular joint then hemorrhage from the ear on the affected side means bleeding comes from the ear of the affected side then battle sign this is a sign which is a reddish reddishness at at the mastoid process below the ear then lock mandible it is difficult to open the mouth to the patient then hollow over the condylar region after the edema has subsided paresthesia of the lower lip deviation of the affected side upon opening if the unilateral condylar fracture is occurred when the patient is trying to open the mouth the jaw is deviated toward the affected side painful limitation of the movement if the bilateral condylar fracture is occurred same as the above all the features we will see that is the battle sign tenderness difficult to open the mouth lower lip paresthesia limited in mouth opening restricted mandibular movement and anterior open bite now investigation here we come to the investigation treatment plan for the mandibular fracture is very dependent on the precise radiographical diagnosis so the radiographical diagnosis is very essential first is extraoral radiograph second is intraoral radiograph and other is desirable radiographs just essential radiograph is the oblique lateral radiograph you will see it in this radiograph this is oblique lateral radiograph this is taken from the lower side of the mandible here we see the fracture line okay the fracture of the body proximally to canine to region and fracture of the angle ramus and condylar region posterior anterior view of the x ray rotated posterior anterior view this is a reverse town view this is ideal for showing the lateral and medial condylar displacement is taken from the back side of the patient then essential of intraoral radiograph periapical radiograph this is very important to associate tooth line fracture existing pathology related to the tooth line of the fracture fracture of the tooth in line of mandibular fracture occlusion radiograph is associated root of the tooth line of the fracture this is desirable radiograph this ct scan in this ct can ct scan you will see the fracture line of the patient here it is described also then how you will manage main the fracture the first e things is to maintain the airway for that you have to see the tongue falling back you have to clear that tongue so the airway should not be obstructed and patient will take a breath properly then remove all the blood clot occurs in the mouth then fracture teeth segment if the teeth is fractured and luxated so 
subluxated you have to remove or extract that tooth then broken fillings anything which is broken inside the mouth is very dangerous it will obstruct the airway so it should be removed and the, if the patient is dentulous and wearing the denture you have to remove that denture second is to main, thing is to maintain the hemorrhage you hemo try to control hemorrhage by using some artery forceps soft tissue laceration you have to remove all the soft tissue laceration lacerated tissue or injured tissue support of a bone fragment if the fracture is major you have to support some bone fragment with a uh, some instrument then you have to take control over the pain give some analgesic medicine some anesthesia over that area so patient will not feel the pain and in infection control you will control the infection by giving some antibiotics and some betadine mouthwash over there and give the proper food and fluid for the diet the operative treatment for the fracture it will be classified in a two forms reduction and immobilization reduction is also divided into two forms open reduction and closed reduction in open reduction we will align the bone of the fragment by only using some traditional method included in closed reduction we will go for the surgical option to the patient and second is immobilization to allow bone healing and through the fixation of a fixture fixture fracture line in immobilization process we will not allow patient to mobile so that part will be fixed that is rigid and non rigid bone healing is altered up by type of fixation and mobility of the fracture site in relation to the functions primary bone healing and secondary bone healing that is not that so important as some bone healing here are some methods to fix the intermaxillary fixation that is first is bonded bracket and dental wire in direct or eyelet ajiban or cap splint in closed reduction fracture reduction that involves the technique of not opening the skin or mucosa covering the fracture site fracture site heals by secondary bone healing and this is also form of a non rigid fixation indication for the closed reduction is non disposable favorable fracture mandibular fracture in a children with developing dentition and condylar fracture contraindication for the closed reduction alcoholic seizure disorder mental retardation nutritional concern and respiratory disease and unfavorable fracture this is a contraindication advantage of the closed reduction is low cost short procedure time can be done in a clinical setting with local anesthesia or sedation and easy procedure disadvantage not absolute stability secondary bone healing oral hygiene is difficult and possible tmj sequels this is muscle atrophy and decreased range of the motion technique for the closed reduction is arch bar avi loop Hissing wiring, 
intermaxillary fixation, screw, splint, and bridle wire. This is a closed relation technique. Open reduction. It is implies to the opening of the skin or mucosa to visualize the fracture and reduction of the fracture. Can be used for the manipulation of the fracture only. Can be used for the non-rigid and rigid fixation of the fracture. Open reduction is indicated in a unfavorable and unstable mandibular fracture. Fractures of the edentulous mandibular fracture with soft displacement. Delayed treatment with interposition of the soft tissue that prevents close reduction technique to reapproximate the fragment. Here is a open reduction. You will see in open reduction the site will be open by surgically and it will be fixed by rigid fixation. or it will be wired suture by this technique this is non rigid fixation by open reduction special consideration in edentulous mandible and mandibular in children mandibular fracture in children what to do fracture of edentulous mandible Then complexion of the fracture, misapplied fixation, infection after fracture is very common, TMJ ankylosis that is a rigidness of the TMJ and very difficult to open the TMJ, open the mouth, no damage, displaced teeth, gingiva and periodontal complications. Malunion may be occurs delayed union or non-union limitation in mouth opening and scar formation now last but not the least conclusion uh, adequate knowledge of the diagnosis and the management of the various types of mandibular fracture is needed so as to provide the desired treatment in order to prevent unfavorable and adverse complications this is all the thing i am showing you about the factors of mandible so please subscribe our channel for more dental educational video bye bye and good to see you in the next video bye